For this quick sewing project, you're going to need two pieces of fabric measuring 8.5 inches by 28 inches. Now I'm using contrasting fabrics, but you could use the same fabric if you prefer. You'll also need two pieces of fabric for the pockets and these measure 8.5 inches by 16 inches. And then you'll need a piece of batting and that measures 8.5 inches by 28 inches. And also a piece of Inselbright that measures the same, so 8.5 inches by 28 inches. Now Inselbright is a heat resistant batting, but if you don't have Inselbright, you can substitute that with another piece of batting. But just remember it may not be as heat resistant as the Inselbright. The first thing we're going to do is take our pocket pieces and we'll fold each in half and then create a crease along the fold line. Use your iron to do this so that you get a nice crease. Now you can see that I've given my folded edge a good press and these are my raw edges down the bottom here. Now I've drawn a quarter of an inch from the folded edge on the top of each of these pockets and then I've come down and I've drawn another line an inch from that line and I'm going to top stitch both of those lines. And by the way, I'm using a friction pen to draw those lines, so make sure you use an erasable fabric pen or chalk to draw your lines. Or you could just eyeball it and not draw any lines at all, but don't use a ballpoint. So now we're stitching along those lines, and you can see that I'm not doing a back stitch at either end. I'm simply top stitching along that first line, and then I'll come back and stitch along the second line. Now the next thing we're going to do is place our batting and our insole bright together and line them up nicely. And then we're going to take our inside piece and lay it down on the batting with the right side facing up. And now we're going to take our pocket pieces and we'll place one at each end. Make sure the raw edges all line up with the raw edges and that the folded edge is facing towards the middle. And then we're going to take our backing piece and place it face down on our quilt sandwich. Then we'll line up all the edges and pin them, or you can use clips if you prefer. Alright, so it's all pinned beautifully in place and I'm going to draw a couple of lines so that I have an opening marked and I'm going to draw one here and one down here. I've left about 6 inches. Now you want it to be a reasonable size to turn this through. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew around with a half inch seam. So I'll start with a back stitch at one of the opening marks and then I'll continue around and rather than pivot I'm going to sew right off the end and that'll help just to reinforce the corners when it comes to trimming them. So as you can see there, I'll take it right out of the machine, turn it round and then start sewing down the other side. Now just keep going until you reach the other mark that we made and then you'll do a back stitch to finish off. So you can see here where the opening is, just lift it up to show you, and now we're going to trim the corners. And now I'm going to trim across, taking care not to cut the overlapping threads, so be very careful you don't do that. And I'm also going to trim back a little bit on each side of the corner, just to remove some of that bulk. And I'm going to actually do that on all four corners. Now what I'm going to do next is turn the piece over and trim the batting and the insole bright layers to remove some of the bulk. Now I'm not cutting the material. Now take your time with this, trim it down to about halfway. You don't want to go too close to the stitch line but you just want to get rid of you know about half of that layer. Now make sure that you do take your time and don't cut through the fabric as I happen to do on one piece. And just continue all the way around the batting edge and it should look like this when it's done. So now we're ready to turn it through. So just reach in and pull the inside through to the outside. And just make sure when you're doing this that the pockets come through the right way. I did exactly that with the first one I made and I thought that I'd sewn the pockets on wrong and then proceeded to unpick it only to find I just hadn't turned them through correctly. So keep that in mind as you do this. And once you're done bringing it through, you just need to push out the corners. Now I use an apple core to do this, but you can use a chopstick or a pair of scissors. Though be careful when using scissors because they are pointy at the end and they could tear through your fabric and you don't want that. At this point we'll want to give the oven mitt a good press, particularly around that opening. This bit can be a bit fiddly so just take your time with it as it would look a lot better in the end if you've got it all lined up nicely. So you want to iron it so the opening is closed and then iron all the way around the edges. This will make it much easier to sew. So our oven mitt is nicely pressed and we're ready to top stitch all the way around the edge. Now this will not only give it a nice finish, but it will also close in that opening that we left uh, to turn it through. And you can see that here. So it will close that in nicely. 
Now you can use an eighth of an inch or you can use a quarter of an inch. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you what you want to use. I'm doing about an eighth of an inch on this one. I started with a back stitch and I come down now. Don't sew off the end. Turn around and pivot when you get to the corner. So just leave the needle in and turn the whole thing around and then start sewing down the other side again. And then finish with a back stitch as well. And there you have it. Our oven mitt is finished. And you can do it in a material that suits your kitchen decor, or you can do it in a funky fabric like I've done here. Now these make great gifts, and with Christmas coming up, well, you can run up a few in no time at all. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And you'll find the written instructions over on the website at alandacraft.com.